أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله وحده والصلاة والسلام على من لا نبي بعده أما بعد إن شاء الله تعالى this evening uh, wanted to cover a subject I was uh, I was peeking over uh, peeking through my library and uh, came across uh, this Kutayib. Um, the, the book, uh, it's a small book. It's called Man Tusalli Alayhimul Malaikatu Wa Man Tal'anu. Who do the angels pray for and who do they curse? Uh, I think I remember years ago we covered the subject. Um, and I don't, I think we only discussed a portion of it, uh, we kind of went through some of the, the book, uh, with the, we covered just a couple of the issues, uh, and I thought maybe it would be beneficial, inshallah ta'ala, for us to, uh, go through and cover all of the issues, um, uh, don't in, we're not going to read the book per se. We're going to cover uh, the subject or the uh, the categories and the dalil. We're going to cover the categories and the dalil, uh, inshallah ta'ala. And the reason why uh, I said that this subject is beneficial or this subject is important is because the dua of the malaika or the supplication of the angels for a person or against a person is something that is answered by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, just uh, in, in, in order to establish this point and mentioning just one evidence for this, uh, we're gonna we'll use the statement of Allah uh, from Surah Al Anbiya. Ayat number, uh, I believe it's ayat number 26, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, وَقَالُوا اتَّخَذَ الرَّحْمَانُ وَلَدَ سُبْحَانَ بَلْ عِبَادٌ مُكْرَمُونَ لَا يَسْبِقُونَهُ بِالْقَوْلِ وَهُمْ بِأَمْرِهِ يَعْمَلُونَ Allah ta'ala, he says, and they say that Ar-Rahman has taken a child. Glory be to him, or exalted is he. Rather, they are honored servants. They do not precede him in speech, and they act according to his command. Uh, so, Al-Imam Al-Baghawi, rahimahullah ta'ala, in his tafsir of this ayah, when Allah says, وَقَالُوا اتَّخَذَ الرَّحْمَانُ وَلَدًا And they say that Ar-Rahman has taken a child. Imam al-Baghawi rahimahullah, he said that this ayat was revealed concerning Khuza'a. Now before we go on, does anybody remember who is Khuza'a? We talked about them in our Sira class. Does anybody remember who they were? People of Medina? No? People of Medina? Kind of, well, that's kind of true, uh, but I, I think you're referring to, I, I believe you're referring to someone else. You might be referring to someone else. Abu Tariq. Okay, where, so where were they from? Do you remember where Khuza'a was from? Huh? They were from Yemen. Why were they called Khuza'a? Because they broke off, exactly, right? They were the ones who... Uh, they were the ones who broke off. Al-Muhim, Al-Baghawi, rahimahullah, he said that this ayat was revealed about Khuza'a because Khuza'a, they were the ones who used to say that the angels were the daughters of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so Al-Baghawi, rahimahullah, said this ayat is in reference, uh, was revealed about Khuza'a. Uh, because they were the ones who said that the angels were the daughters of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah, in refuting this claim, He says, And they say 
that Ar Rahman has taken a child. Subhana. Allah, He frees Himself, or He He Nazzah Nafsu, or He 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 purifies Himself from this uh, from this claim. He says, "Bel ibadun mukramun." Rather, they, meaning the malaika, reading the angels, are ibad mukramun, that they are honored servants. They are honored servants. So this is the first aspect of this verse, uh, or these verses that lead us to understand the importance of the supplication of the of the malaika is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala described them as being honored servants. Uh, and all of them are honored servants of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as Allah mentioned here in this ayah. And so the fact that they are honored servants and Allah has praised them in his book gives them uh, a particular uh, position and a particular status. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in the next ayah, لا يسبقونه بالقول وهم بأمره يعملون that they do not precede him in speech and they work or they implement his command. Al Imam Al Baghawi رحمه الله he said along with Al Imam Al Shokani uh, and others they said in their tafsir of this ayah when Allah says they do not precede uh, they do not precede him in speech meaning لا يتقدمونه بالقول ولا يقولون إلا ما يأمرهم به that they do not precede him in speech nor do they say anything except that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has commanded them to say and so this is the second aspect of this verse or of these verses that shows the importance of the supplication of the angels uh, and that is that Allah Azza wa Jal has described them as not superseding Allah in speech. Meaning that the angels when they, when they say something, when they make a dua or they make a statement, that they're only making that statement uh, because Allah has commanded them or has permitted them to make this uh, supplication or to make this statement. The angels do not supersede Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in speech, meaning they do not just uh, say something uh, like as, as us humans, sometimes we say things uh, and we don't know if Allah is pleased with it or if Allah is not pleased with it. We just, it comes to our mind and we say things. You know, it, it, we, we think it, we say it. The angels don't speak like this. The malaika, they don't have this type of, of speech where they think of something and just say something. La. Uh, the angels, they, they do not supersede Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in speech. And so therefore, uh, when we find that Allah or His Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they tell us that the angels will supplicate for so and so and say such and such. Then that means that when they make that dua or they make that supplication or they make that uh, that la'na or they make that when they ask Allah to curse someone or they ask Allah to have mercy on someone then they did not say that haphazardly that did not come uh, as a haphazard statement or that did not come off of, of, of hastiness but rather uh, because they do not supersede Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in speech then that means that Allah azza wa jal has granted them permission or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has ordered them to uh, make this supplication or to curse uh, these particular individuals. And so this is why the subject is, uh, is, is important uh, so that we can take benefit um, from those individuals that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has told us or the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has told us that they pray for and that we can stay away from the characteristics of those whom the angels uh, I ask Allah uh, to curse. So we're going to start with, inshallah, uh, we're going to start with the individuals whom the angels pray for. We're going to start with the group or the, the characteristics or the people that the angels, they supplicate for. Uh, the first, the first category 
uh, of individuals that the angels uh, make dua for that the author has mentioned here uh, in his book. Uh, he says, Istighfar al-Malik liman bata tahiran. The seeking of forgiveness of the angel, the angel seeks forgiveness for the one who goes to sleep in a state of tahara. Meaning that a person, when he goes to bed, he goes to bed and he's in a state of wudu. Uh, either A, he, he purifies himself from the major uh, hadith or he purifies himself from the minor hadith. But he, when he goes to sleep at night time, when he's laying down, to, he knows that I'm going to bed, then he goes to bed in a state of tahara. And he brings uh, two hadith. Uh, these hadith were authenticated. Uh, well, the first one was authenticated by al Hafiz ibn Hajar. And the second one was authenticated by al Sheikh al-Albani. Rahimahumullahu ta'ala. So the first hadith was, was reported by al-Imam al-Tabarani on the authority of Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhuma that the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said tahiru hadhihi al-ajsad tahharakum Allah fa innahu laysa min abdin yabitu tahiran illa bata ma'ahu fi shi'arihi malakun la yanqalibu sa'atan min al-layli illa qal allahumma aghfir li 'abdika fa innahu bata tahiran so the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said Cleanse or purify your bodies, may Allah purify you. For verily, there is no person or is no slave that goes to sleep or goes to bed in a state of tahara, except that there is an angel that goes to that, that will be or that will spend the night with him in his shi'ar, which is uh, his blankets or his pillows. So a person when he goes to bed, he has with himself like blankets or sheets and pillows and things that he sleeps with um, this and so the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam he said that for verily there is no slave that he spends the night in a state of Tahara except that an angel will spend the night along with him uh, and he will not uh, move or he will not turn over at any time throughout the night except that when he turns over the angel will say oh Allah forgive your slave for verily he has spent the night in a state of uh, the second hadith that is mentioned here has been reported by Ibn Hibban. Uh, so it was authenticated by Ibn Hibban and it was also authenticated by a Sheikh Al Albani, Rahimahullah Ta'ala. Uh, he brings with this chain of narration on the authority of Abdullah ibn Umar, radiallahu anhuma, that the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Man bata tahiran, bata fi shi'arihi malak. فَلَمْ يَسْتَيْقِذْ إِلَّا قَالَ الْمَلِكَ اللَّهُمَّ اغْفِرْ لِعَبْدِكَ فُلَانْ فَإِنَّهُ بَاتَ طَاهِرًا So the Prophet والسلام, in this hadith, he says, whoever spends the night in a state of tahara, then an angel will spend, a night, will spend the night along with him, uh, and he will not wake up, except that the angel will say, O oh Allah, forgive your slave so-and-so, for verily he has spent the night in a state of tahara. Uh, so here, these two hadith, uh, it shows us the benefit of going to sleep while in a state of tahara. Uh, and it's very easy. A person, when he knows he's going to bed, then he just goes to the bathroom and he makes wudu. Uh, and then he goes to sleep. And by doing so, the person will have the benefit of an angel accompanying him. He'll have the benefit of an angel accompanying him and being with him throughout the night. And so if he turns over, because you know people are sleeping, the people they, they turn over, they roll over in the middle of the night, they're rolling, you know, they spend an hour on one side, an hour or two on the other side, and they roll over uh, from one side to the other throughout the night. As he rolls over in the nighttime, every time he rolls over, the angel will say, Oh Allah, Forgive your slave, for verily he has spent the night in a state of tahara. Or if a person wakes up, because we also, we wake up in the middle of the night. Sometimes people wake up uh, from time to time in the middle of the night time. Uh, sometimes in order to use the bathroom or sometimes in order to get a cup of water 
or whatever have you, or sometimes people just wake up because they hear a noise or whatever. Uh, and any time that happens, the angel will say, uh, Oh Allah, forgive your slave, for verily he has spent the night in a state of tahara. So this should encourage us uh, to, before we go to sleep at night time, to go to sleep uh, in a state of tahara. And we shouldn't, it should be a regular practice. Uh, it, may, it may take some, uh, some work in the very beginning. It may take you know, some effort. If we're not already used to doing this, and so in, the, in, in the beginning, it may take a week or so of, of forcing ourselves to do this. But after a while, it, it, it will become a regular practice, kind of like brushing our teeth. Uh, it's just something that is part of the routine. It's part of the daily routine is that we know we go and we, we brush our teeth. And it's, we don't consider that to be, inshallah, I hope we don't consider that to be, uh, you know, hardship on us. But it's just something that we do as part of the routine. And so if we're not used to already making wudu uh, before we go to sleep, then if we do it for a week or two weeks or three weeks or a month, then after that, inshallah ta'ala, it'll become uh, routine. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us to go to sleep on tahara so that we can take benefit from, uh, from this hadith, from the, from the presence of the angels uh, making dua for us. Uh, the next category of those that are mentioned here in this book, من تصلي عليهم الملائكة Those whom that the angels that they make salat for. صلاة الملائكة على القاعد في انتظار الصلاة The prayer of the angels for the one who is sitting waiting for the salat. And this is uh, when a person is sitting in the masjid waiting for from one salat to the next salat. And this will be whether it is between Maghrib and Isha or if it is between Dhuhr and Asr or between Asr and Maghrib or even if it is between Fajr and uh, Fajr and Dhuhr. As long as the person is sitting uh, in the masjid and he's waiting for the salat and his intention is that I'm sitting here waiting for the salat, then the angels will be making dua and supplicating uh, for that uh, individual. The proof of this is the hadith that you can find in the sahih of Al-Imam Muslim, where Imam Muslim, rahimahullah, he brings with his chain of narration on the authority of Abu Huraira, radiallahu anhu, who said that the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, أحدكم ما قعد ينتظر الصلاة في صلاة ما لم يحدث تدعو له الملائكة اللهم اغفر له اللهم ارحمه The Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said in this hadith that is found in the sahih of Al-Imam Muslim one of you uh, as long as he is sitting waiting for the salat then he is in salat one of you as long as he is sitting, waiting for the salat, then he is in the salat. I Meaning he's, he's rewarded as, 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 as though he's making the salat. As long as he is sitting, waiting for the salat. مَا لَمْ يُحْدِثْ As long as he does not break his wudu. As long as he does not break his wudu. تَدْعُوا لَهُ الْمَلَائِكَةَ The angels will be supplicating for him. اللَّهُمَّ اغْفِرْ لَهُ اللَّهُمَّ ارْحَمْهُ O oh Allah, forgive him. O oh Allah, have mercy on him. Uh, and so, the, the part that, the portion of the hadith that we want to uh, concentrate on is the portion where the Prophet, alayhi salatu wasalam, he tells us that the malaika are making or supplicating for the one who is sitting waiting for the salah. Now, this does not include a person who is sitting in the masjid waiting for someone because they owe him money. For example, uh, you know, you, you say, hey, uh, I need, you remember, I, you know, I, you borrowed from me that $100, well, I need my $100 back. This person says, okay, well, I'll meet you at the masjid for Salat al-Isha. So you just so happen to be driving by, you're like, you know what, let me just come and pray maghrib. You know, and, and since I'm here, there's no point in me going home and coming all the way back, 
So I'll just sit here and wait. You see, this person is waiting for what? He's waiting for his money. That's what he's waiting for. He's waiting for his money. That's why he's sitting there. And so we're not talking about that individual. We're talking about the person who sincerely has come to the masjid and he, his intention and his only purpose of being in the masjid and he's waiting is for the establishment of the salah. And so as long as he's in a state of wudu, <coughs> as long as he's in a state of wudu and he's sitting in the masjid and he's waiting for the salah, whether that he's sitting in a chair or whether he's sitting on the floor, whether he's laying down on his side, whether he's reading the Quran or whether he is uh, you know, playing with the, you know, the lint balls and the carpet, as long as he is sitting in the masjid and he's waiting for the salah, ما لم يحدث, as long as he hasn't uh, committed hadith, meaning he hasn't broken his wudu, then the angels, the entire time that he's sitting there, will be making supplication, will be supplicating to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for this individual, Allahumma ghafir lahu, Allahumma arhamhu. Oh Allah, forgive him. Oh Allah, have mercy on him. And so the angels will be making the supplication the entirety uh, of, of that time, which is a tremendous uh, dua for this a person to benefit from. Because if, how long is it between Maghrib and Isha, for example? What is that? Like a, so an hour. So if a person is sitting in the masjid for one hour, waiting for the salah, and that's the, the only thing that's keeping him sitting there is the salah, right? He's, he has the ability to get up and go, right? He's not waiting for his ride as soon as the ride comes and he's leaving left. He's there intentionally waiting for the next congregational salah. Then the entirety of that hour, the angels are saying, Oh Allah, forgive him. Oh Allah, have mercy on him. And so that's a tremendous, tremendous benefit for waiting uh, for the salah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us uh, from amongst them. Uh, the next category or the next group of individuals that the, the malaika make salah upon, uh, that they pray for, he says, Salat al malaika ala ahl al sufuf al mutaqaddima fi salah. He says the, the prayer of the angels for the people who are in the front rows. The prayer of the angels of uh, the people who are in the front rows. Meaning that the angels pray for the people in the first row. Um, usually in the normal circumstances, uh, if you're going to be in the first row, uh, you have to get to the masjid early. You have to get to the masjid early. Uh, and this, uh, a lot of times if you come to the masjid late, then you're not going to get and make it to the front row. But for those who have prepared themselves, uh, they came to the masjid early, they, they've made their wudu, they've gotten dressed, they come to the masjid early, uh, and they will uh, be able to take a, a spot in the front row, then uh, these individuals will benefit from the prayer of the angels. Uh, they mentioned, he mentions the hadith uh, that was reported by Ibn Hibban. Uh, so it was authenticated by Ibn Hibban. It was also authenticated by a Shaykh Shu'ib al Arnaud, uh, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, uh, where Ibn Hibban, Rahimahullah, he brings his chain of narration on the authority of Al Bara ibn Azib, radiallahu anhu, who said that, Can uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqul? إن الله وملائكته يصلون على الصف الأول. He said that the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم used to say, uh, and this means كان يقول means that he didn't say it one time, but he used to say it consistently. I Meaning it was something that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم used to say on a regular basis. Which uh, the purpose of that? for him to be repeating that is so that the people can be encouraged to, uh, to take benefit. So the Prophet wasallam used to say, indeed Allah and his angels, they make salah for the first row. They make salah for the first row. Meaning the salah, meaning this is the, it's the prayer. And uh, for the, so the angels, 
They make salat on the people who pray in the first row. They make salat for the people who pray in the first row. Uh, so this shows us the importance of us coming to the masjid early uh, so that we can make sure that we have a place in the front row so that we can take benefit from the supplication of the malaika who they are praying for the people who make it to uh, the first row. Uh, inshallah ta'ala we're going to uh, we're going to stop here uh, well let's so let's recap we said that the subject of the supplication of the malaika is important uh, because of uh, many reasons we, we mentioned one ayah or mentioned well, one section of the Quran where Allah ta'ala says وَقَالُوا اتَّخَذَ الرَّحْمَانُ وَلَدَ سُبْحَانَ بَلْ عِبَادُ مكرمون. لا يسبقونه بالقول وهم بأمره يعملون. They say that our Rahman has taken a child, uh, glorified be he. Rather, they are honored servants. They do not supersede him in speech, and they uh, implement what he has commanded, or what he has what he commands. So this shows us the importance of the supplication of the angels, and we mentioned three categories of individuals that the angels make salat for. The first was who? The people who spend the night in a state of tahar. The second, those people who are in the masjid waiting for the salat. And the third, those people who are praying in the front row. The people are praying in the front row. So inshallah ta'ala, we're gonna stop here. And I think these are issues that are easy for us to implement. Uh, if we put our minds to it and we make our intentions to implement this, uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make these affairs easy for us. Uh, does anybody have any questions about what we've covered so far? <laughs> That's why I said under normal circumstances, Allah al Mustan, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us. Um, May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and guide us. Uh, some people, uh, they require back support. Some of our brothers who are elderly, or have you know back pains or have injuries, they require back support. It's difficult for them to sit, uh, you know, in the middle of the floor. However, for those of our brothers who they you know they're, 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 that's not their case, and they just come in the masjid early and they post up on the wall because it's comfortable, you know they you know they want to relax against the wall. Then they are they're allowing for other people to who come after them to take their spot. Uh, in the front row because they're sitting they end up praying in like the third row or the fourth row uh, and they, they should they, that's something that they should uh, they, they should be warned against um, and that's not you know because why, why would a person who comes early and has a spot give up the spot to someone else and let them take the reward and again that, that's for those people who uh, they don't have any issues, but some brothers we do know that they have issues, uh, they have back pains and things like that. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and, 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 and forgive us. We're going to talk about that inshallah. That's our next. Alaikum salam rahmatullah. That's our next discussion inshallah. Now, he brings the hadith and he, he mentions that it's authentic. We're going to talk about the hadith inshallah. No, it's all done. Are there still lessons on the Akhira? No, we, we finished those uh, some time ago. Uh, now on, um, we, we have on Sundays, we have our lessons on the Seerah, uh, the biography of the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, 
And on Tuesdays, we have our classes or our lessons in the book Riyadh al-Salihin by Al-Imam al-Nawawi, rahimahullah ta'ala. Um, Khair, inshallah. We'll stop here and then we'll pick up again next week. Hada wallahu ta'ala a'lam wa sallallahu wa sallama wa baraka ala nabiyana Muhammad. Wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullah.